Good morning, beautiful souls. Happy New Year. I thought I'd bring you along on the homestead to share with you some things that are happening around here. This morning, the goats are just waiting to get their breakfast. Any other time of the year when I am milking, I have to do chores pretty much at the exact same time before Jared goes to work when the sun's just coming up. But this time of year, and this morning especially, we hung out, had a family breakfast, talked about what to plant in the garden, and delayed a little bit doing chores. So they are ready to eat. Our expecting mamas are inside the house getting extra grain and minerals. And this here is lamb chop. She is not pregnant. <laughs> she's on a diet. If you can tell, she's just a little big. Also, our boy Mars is out here because he doesn't need the grain either. We're hoping to purchase him. We've been borrowing him from another farm and we're hoping to purchase him as a breeder for the sustainability of our farm. And we just really love him. He has a great personality. It looks like the pigs are getting hungry, if you can hear them. The mamas and Wooly are in here eating. <laughs> oh my goodness, you're drooling! You're drooling, you're so hungry there! Oh my goodness! Let's get you some food! Yeah! This morning they get stored pumpkin. We feed our pigs exclusively on kitchen scraps from <laughs> local restaurants and families that we pick up from weekly. The pigs are doing an awesome job out here in the back forest pasture. We use our animals to help clear the forest. So the goats have been in here eating the greenery, followed by the pigs and we tend to switch back with goats and pigs and chickens. You might want to cover your ears for this one. I'm going to have the piglets wish you a happy new year. They're happily eating right here. You ready? Are you ready, Rosemary? <laughs> Normally what happens this time of year is that we have an egg shortage. Our older chickens molt this time of year and chicken egg development is also very sensitive to the amount of sunlight that's available, which is very low this time of year. So what we have this year, someone's going to lay an egg. Oh, she just laid an egg. She just laid her egg. Her egg is still shiny. Good job. She actually has a green egg. We have been breeding her. She is a crested cream leg bar mother and a copper moran, a black copper moran father to yield a blue egg with a dark brown plume to give it a green shell. You can see the colors changing now that it's drying out. Good job. So this year we have an abundance of eggs for the first time ever. And that is simply because we saved a lot of our hatching chicks that hatched out at the end of summer. And it took about four to five months for them to start laying. And now they're laying their very first eggs. Good job. Kalmbach non-GMO laying pellet 
And then we also give them pork lard. It's one of the best sources of polyunsaturated fats, omega-6s, and linoleic acids. So that is something that we have naturally on the farm from raising our American pig hogs, and it's great to give to our birds as well. Our animals need water. One of the really nice things that we installed on the farm are these frost-free hydrants right behind me. Years ago, I remember just hauling water in five gallon buckets. And it's so nice now to have these frost-free hydrants because even in the coldest days of winter, we can hook the hose up, turn it on, and we have fresh water for our animals. Really, really nice. I highly recommend them. Right now we have lots of cover crops set up in our garden beds. Different mixes depending on where in the garden we have them. This one has a lot of oats, daikon radish, peas, farther back. Behind me where the goats will be, that has perennials like clover and hairy vetch, plus some additional nutrients like turnips and different things in there for the goats. And then all along here, we have a bunch of onions planted. These are the red and yellow kinds. We will plant the sweet Vidalia, technically not Vidalia, but we'll plant those sweet onions later in the spring. But onions are a great one here in our zone 7B that we can overwinter. Here we have some strawberries that are under cover. Basically, this is for frost protection. We will have this covered up on frosty nights. And in a couple months, when we start to see blossoms, we will take half the cover off in the morning, allow the bees to come in and pollinate. We have a blossom there, it's still too early. It's because it's been so warm this week. But we will take that off, let the bees pollinate, and then cover them up again at night. And this should allow us to get strawberries, fingers crossed, a little bit earlier than if they were uncovered in our area. It is a very warm day already. You can see I'm in my t-shirt, which means the honeybees are out, they are active, they are looking for nectar and pollen, even though it is very scarce. We have installed candy boards, which is that wooden piece just in case they go through all their stored honey. They'll eat that candy board. And right above that candy board is a quilt box. And we put that in just to help with the condensation and the moisture levels during these winter fluctuations and temperatures and nighttime lows. So hopefully we will return to you in a couple months after February and our hives will be healthy, mite free and have had plenty of food to last them through the winter, ready to move forward into the spring and make lots of honey, hopefully. If you look close, you can see they're coming back with pollen on their legs, which is a good sign. I see some red pollen and some bright yellow pollen. So they are finding pollen somewhere. And in the next few weeks, the queen will start to lay eggs again to prepare for the spring and that pollen will help them make new bees. I opened it up with a hatchet. What is it? Coconut. Mm, where did you get that coconut? Florida.
two, three, four. They're not as dark, that's why. <laughs> well, we made a lot of progress today on the new goat kidding barns and pasture. We look forward to having more community out here on the farm in a few months, and we wish you all a happy new year.